Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing! Hello, how's it going? How are you? How are you? Happy Wednesday. I can't believe it feels like a long time since we streamed. That was just Saturday, right? I am getting burnt out. <laughs> like between the Christmas sewing and the weather. I feel kind of punky. My poor husband's ankle is still hurting. But I did move my cat in, from the cottage to the house. That's actually not going well, but at least we're all in one house. So. <laughs> hey, Fiona. Hey, Jan. Hey, Delwyn. Hey, Fee hey, Hannah. How's it going? Hey, Allison. Your notification work. That's awesome. I can't get my um, post that I'm live to work on Instagram. It says, we'll do it when there's a better connection. I'm like, how much better do you want it to be? So, oh, well. It'll probably do it, like, it'll post it towards the end of the stream. But that means I also didn't put the link in the storage, which I've been doing, which is kind of nice. So, all right. Um, so this is pretty, I think this is my last live stream of the year. I Don't quote me on that, but this is my last planned project of the year. And um, I wanted to make my husband one more long sleeve shirt. So I thought I'd try the Jensen by Wardrobe by Me. Has anybody made this one? It's... So it's basically um, just a straight up button down collar, collar stand. Uh, it does have the shirt sleeve placket, like the tower placket option. Um, and there was something else I wanted to say about it. I think you can just do a binding option if you didn't want to do the tower placket, but we're gonna do the tower placket because, right? Because we're gonna do it. Hey Libby, how's it going? Is everything look and sound okay? Let me know if it doesn't or if it does. So this is the Jensen. So, you know, basically it says relaxed, but I think it's just basically meaning like that's the vibe of it. I don't think it's oversized because she has an over shirt pattern that actually I just saw her post on Instagram. I was like, ooh, I kind of want to make that too. And she said also that the Anna is the women's version of this and it's identical in sewing. So if you've got the Anna, you can sew along with me and it'll be the same. So, um, and then she gave us a discount code right here, which is really nice of her. There's a link in my profile, but it is an affiliate link, just so you know that. Hopefully they don't cancel each other out. I, I had already typed all that before she offered the discount. So I was like, oh, that's so nice. So we'll take her up on it. So um, let me tell you about the sizing. So interestingly, you guys know I've made the Fairfield button up by um, Thread Theory a bunch. And that's why I thought it'd be fun to try a diff totally different one because I'm, I'm up for it. Um, this one, I don't think this one comes with different variations like the Thread, the thread Theory one comes with a, a fuller. It says a fuller. No, you know what it is? That's interesting. Now, now I'm realizing it. There's one with darts in the back, a slim fit. 
And then there's one if you have, um, if you want a fuller belly version. I've been making the fuller be belly version for my husband. He doesn't have a full belly though. So it's just not a slim fit. This one's just straight up. Hey Sarah, how's it going? Um, but I will say the sizing is quite a bit different. So for my husband on the Fairfield, I make the size small and I'm gonna make the size large in the wardrobe by me. That's the difference. Cause the chest is 38 and a half in the large and that's the small in the Fairfield. So there's probably more smaller sizes with this pattern, which is interesting to note because it goes down to a 29 inch chest. So I imagine you could do this for young men and women as well. Um, and it goes up to a 45 and a half inch chest and that is 116 centimeters for metric. All right, and it goes down to 74 centimeters for the um, smallest in metric. Hi Aisha, how's it going? All right, I don't print out everything, so hopefully I'm not missing anything else. <laughs> I just print out like the gist, the gist, you know? So I got this fabric, this is partly why I wanted to make this. I got this fabric from Maker Supply. I know I mentioned them. Can you see, look how thick this is. It's like so lofty. So when I got it, it's 90% cotton, 10% yak wool. And when I got it, I was like, oh, that's really thin. Like it felt really, really thin and smooth. I washed it and it's, it's really fluffed up. It's so amazing. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I gotta decide which side to do. I think this is the right size side. It's like darker blue on that side. It's got a really uh, narrow diagonal twill weave. I don't know if you can even see it. Dang, it really shows up in person. Eek. You can't see it at all. That is crazy. Well, um, I'll show you a picture on Instagram if you're on there. Hi, Marlies. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. So um, it uh, looks like it's 44 inches wide. And I decided, I wasn't sure how to wash it because of the 10% yak, but I was like, you know what? Let's just go for it. And so I threw the whole thing in the laundry and um because i figured that's how it'll be washed anyway so and it seems fine i mean it's only 10 percent, so it's not felting in other words it'll just offer a little bit of warmth okay got all my pattern pieces let's get right to it i got a new blade woo woo new blade hype I also pre-washed this other fabric and that's what the, it's a linen and it, I keep finding these little like <laughs> linen things. Right, Jan? I know. Yeah, it's, it's really soft. Like it's the softest flannel I've ever felt in my life. I think you'll like it. It doesn't feel itchy or anything like that. Um, this pattern has, the front is the same left and right. We like that. I always have my beef with the Thread Theory one. But I am a little concerned about fabric, so I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna kind of walk it down here and see where we're at, cause, shoot. I'm really hoping, I'm not short. Okay, so I have this one here. And then I have the sleeve. Yeah, so we're gonna struggle a little bit. <laughs> we are going to struggle a little bit. Mainly with the yolks. But I'm confident. <laughs> Yeah, you do gotta love a new blade. Hey, Thurl, how's it going? Yeah, it's super soft and fluffy. I got um, three fabrics from her during the, um, the sales over Thanksgiving. I got a green linen and a, a denim -y. It's not even denim -y. It's like, um, these are the other two I got. I got this one 
I I want to. I think it was called denim linen. It's very lightweight. Look at how it's even almost sheer. See that? And then I got this because I can eat this color. We all know that. It's also a linen, completely different style, tighter woven than this. So. Those were my splurges. Oh yeah, Jan, that's awesome. There may be someone here who's taken it, you know? Maybe they can uh, give you some feedback on it. This is so fluffy that I can feel my pattern go whoop in when I put the weight on there. <laughs> that's so funny, Jan. Allison. You're not the only one who's playing hooky, I bet. I think today was my day of like, okay, you know what? It's time to let go of some of the expectations of what we want to sew for the holidays. So I decided to make some Sandhill slings because someone gifted me the pattern. And I'm, I think I'll try and stream that at some point. Um, but I decided I'm making three. I kind of went for it. So um, I, I went and got some, some materials locally because I didn't want to worry about like transport. And, but I did order hardware from Noodlehead and it came, it, it's already here. Like I ordered it this weekend and it's, it arrived today. So kudos to her for being on top of it. My printer is so lame that it does this thing. I can't really show it to you because I just cut it off, but it does this thing where it's not printing smooth curves. It's really annoying. So, um, but I went and got that waxer canvas by Robert Kaufman and wow, I really don't like it, you know? Oh, Anne, you are another one getting coal. Let me pour it. See you, Anne. <laughs> Probably thorough. Yeah, I'm not too too worried, but I'm definitely aware that I'll be cutting it really close. All right, I'm gonna cut my notches here. I think I'm going to interface both fronts for the placket because this is what I've been finding. Oh, I wanna mark my pocket. This is what I find on, when I only interface one placket on one of the fronts, what happens is that placket, even if it is cut exactly the same left and right, um, cause I, this, this happened on that latest Fairfield, which was plaid. So, Literally, you can see I cut it perfectly because of the lines of the woven plaid that it's cut on. But one placket was significantly smaller than the other one because of the iron-on interfacing. So I think I'm going to interface both fronts to avoid this. That's my plan. All right, so let's just mark the pocket here. I'm just going to do a quick mark because I think I'm going to try and decide what I, which one I want to be my right and wrong side of the fabric. Um, so I'm not going to spend time marking with pins quite yet until I know. Oh, it's so soft. I'm so glad it fluffed up, you know? And we already have a sleeve going here for pattern pieces. All right, and so I'm thinking this right here, could I get some yolks in here? Because look at that. If I can get the yolks in a place like here or the um, on the backs as well, I can do that. I think we're gonna be completely fine because I think I can get I'm gonna um I'm gonna mark the I'm gonna mark the um green line. Cause I kinda wanna make sure I don't lose track of it. 
I have a full, I have a full mark now. <laughs> hey, Terry, how's it going? We already had our first bot. I'm not going to cut the yoke on the, the bias, but it's certainly an option. And there's no reason why I'm not, or um, I, I like it that way, and I did it on my last one. Maybe if you're someone who's making uh, one of these and you feel like there's a chance that the across the shoulders could be a little bit tight, like the person you're making it for or yourself has broad shoulders and you're pretty slender in comparison, like proportionally, I would then maybe consider making the yoke on the bias. It gives you a little bit more room, but it also means that if you're doing that, then you're cutting both yolks on the bias and it gets a little tricky to sew when you're doing that. Nothing wrong with it, but you may find stabilizing the shoulder seams and across this and even the armhole will be a little bit tricky just to be aware of it. I wouldn't let it sit around for a while. I would sew it. <laughs> I would get to sewing it. Um, I'm going to... I can't tell which notch is which, so I'm going to do the one closer to the shoulder. All right, one, and then we have our other one that can go right here. Um... I'm a, I, maybe I just didn't see your combo. That's what I was, hi Sydney, that's what I was just saying about, but you can be decorative too. Sometimes folks will use it to, um, wow, I can get the whole thing here, look at that. We're gonna be fine for fabric. We are gonna be totally fine. In fact, I'll use this center front line for that edge there. Yeah, because sometimes people will use it. Maybe it's got it'll create a cool effect with whatever fabric your print is, or the woven lines, stripes, plaid, whatever. Checks. My blade is so um, sharp. I have to be really careful right now. <laughs> I can tell. We'll use the scissors for some notches. Most of the wardrobe by me patterns seem to be 3 8 inch seams, so I'm gonna assume that that's what this is here. Oh, I just noticed that there's a notch right here too. There's a lot of notches on this little guy. I would think there would just be a center notch for matching the pleat, but I don't see one. All right. I think the only pattern pieces I'll probably save are the um, pockets. So let's see here. We have the sleeve and we have the back. So how are you guys doing? Are you guys doing any uh, gift sewing and how are you feeling about it? <laughs> I finished all the things I started last week. I finished all of that by the end of Saturday, like before I went home. So I feel pretty good about that. You know, like all the things I started with you guys, cause there were a few extra of the bowl cozies. Um, I got all that done, so that's nice. All right, so I think I'm gonna move this. And when we're concerned with fabric, we do not cut right in the middle. Oh, do you see that, Jan? Libby is asking you about the um, which shirt making class you're looking at. That's one I'd like to add to the, the Mighty Network thing. I just don't, there's no uh, effort has been put towards it yet, so don't wait on me. You know? Nice, Sydney. All right, I can actually go a little bit further. Let's get rid of some of this paper here so we can see. I will say, like, using the glue sticks to tape your pattern pieces together, it's faster. It's a little less fussy. You just can't trust the glue sticks, no matter how fresh they are. You know? 
glue sticks are just like, I don't know. All right, I'm, I'm going to cut it with the pleat. So there's two lines here to cut it on, two fold lines. I'm gonna put the one with the pleat. You'll have more room across the back. But if you're going for more of a tailored look or something um, slimmer fitting, you might consider using the fold line that emits the pleat. I'm just checking my grain. my pocket right there. So we'll try not to cut into that. All right. Oh, there's actually fold marks for the pleat. I've never seen that on the back of a shirt. Oh, I just touched my, I just touched my weight. I don't need that, but I do need this. And I'm also gonna mark the center where I cut it on the fold here. Oh, I had mine yesterday too. I think that's why I'm feeling kind of punky. Oh, you're tracing your Fairfield on the the, uh, the stiff pattern paper. That's awesome. Oh, you guys said a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope you're feeling good too, Dolan. Oh, nice, Aisha. I've been thinking about that oven mitt as a um, face washer, and I know Jan was thinking about it too. And I was thinking, like, what if? You just rem just left the pockets off the back, the you know, like the part where your hand and your thumb go through. What if you just put a piece of wide elastic across, you know? Because it doesn't have to go in the oven. Oh, nice, Libby. You finished a sweater. That's a big accomplishment. New baby. I was about to say, what a time of year to have a new baby. I had a baby before in November, so I actually experienced that. Look at all this fabric on the side here. See that? Plenty of fabric. What was I worried about? But it is close. I mean, look at this. Hopefully I can get my sleeve in here, right? Let's see, I want this on the grain. See, this is why you never line up your cut edge. Plenty, look at that. Well, shiver me timbers. I could probably even get one right here, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna bias it towards the top so that I have this long piece here. Yeah, yeah, so it makes this piece bigger. Okay. Ten and a half, ten and a half. This is going fast. It's a quick stream today. <laughs> Are you Jan nice? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I think um, the face washing thing, I was thinking more, I did, I did nick my blade. Jeez Louise. That is my downfall, is that I am not very aware and I touch my weights, my pattern weights sometimes. Brand new blade. So annoying. Like I barely touched it and it feels like it's bent. <laughs> Let's get rid of all this paper here. Okay. 
Double cut. All right, uh, I'm gonna wait to slit this, but I will nip the um, pleats. I'm gonna take the, the notches going that direction for mine since the large is on that side as well. And then I'm just going to, why does this have a single notch and that has an arrow or a triangle? Huh. Huh. Does that mean that's the back? I'll just cut this triangle in here. I don't know, I don't know what else to do. Hey, Susan, welcome. <laughs> Look at that, it's not even closed. Now I'm getting cavalier. So <clears throat> really what I think I'll do is I'm gonna nip in where this placket's going to go. That's usually enough. And then I'll just mark the top of it. So I know about the length. And, and that's about all I need. Cause you never know what'll happen before, till then, right? Okay, so we just now have all our little pieces and some interfacing. This is a good use of the fabric. I knew I was cutting it close when I ordered it because I wanted to maximize the amount and then I wasn't sure how much it would shrink. So I really did get just the right amount here. <laughs> I should have measured this after I washed it just to see like how much it shrank. That would have been such good information, right? Okay, so there's a lot of pieces here. Let's separate them out. This one right here is interfacing only. So we'll cut that at the end. We have this bias and the little, um, she calls it the house, the sleeve house. That's so cute. Um, we have those and then we have the pockets. Do we want one pocket or two, you guys? Okay, so this pattern is a lot like the Fairfield in that it has separate pattern pieces for interfacing for the cuff and for the collar stand and for the collar. And um, I am sorry, I'm not gonna cut it that way. I'm also gonna create a top collar and a, so that I have a top and an under collar. All right, plenty of fabric. Wow, we really could have taken some chances. <laughs> oh, this actually almost fits here better one, but I can't get all four. Can I get two of these? I can. Okay, we'll do two pockets then. All right, so we need two each of the collar and collar stand, and we need four of the cuff, which we'll do there. And then we're gonna fold this in half here. Now, um, traditionally your um, collar and collar stand, this is the correct grain line, but I have had a lot of luck if I have to turn it because of fabric um, constraints then I feel like this is fine. There's a little bit more stretch sometimes in the length grain. It just depends on the fabric, to be honest. Like this one feels about the same both ways. But there is some logic behind the uh, length grain being the grain line of the, the color running along the length of it like it does here. Like that's how you're, you're kind of taught to do it. I'm usually pretty good at eyeballing my parallel folds but because of the, there's a diagonal weave going this way and this way on this piece, I'm like, huh, where is it? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go two and two. And 
And then I'm going to cut down one of the collars to have an under collar. <laughs> oh, did you get another one? Oh, Aileen's getting cold too. Wow. You ordered some twill from Nick of Time for that hoodie. Oh, cool. Yeah, they take forever to ship things and their shipping is expensive. You know, I'm pretty sure it was them because I actually said something to them about it because they were like, oh, hey, we need a um, physical address. We can't use P.O. box. And I was like, yeah, but you say flat rate shipping and flat rate is a U.S. mail term. So basically what they're saying is we only ship for one price, but that's not how they, they write it on their website. And then I was like, okay, if it was flat rate, it would be priority mail and it would get here a lot faster. But no, they use a pretty um, slow way and it's expensive. Flat rate my butt. I have one fabric that hasn't shipped and I um, it's for a holiday gift and I actually do want to make sure I get it done. No indication if they're shipping or not. I'm like, oh no, I know I'm cutting it close, but are you at least shipping stuff right now? Or like, what's going on? And this particular place, it's Rain Shed. They used to be one of my favorite places to order any outdoor fabrics and things because um, I had used them so much. Okay, I'm gonna use this notch. Uh, I'm gonna use this notch. It's kind of hard to decide. So I'm doing the large and right here, just so you know, I only have two sizes printed. I have the medium and the large printed. That's why I'm having trouble deciding which notch is which. Like here I can tell the notch right here is actually in the format of the medium line. For here, the way I can tell is by the grade. So the notch that's closer to the center would be the smaller size. That's why I'm picking the one furthest away from the center. And I love, love, love it when there is the notch right here. Wait a minute, let me cut this apart here because of my dumb blade. So this notch right here, if you ever have this notch on a collar stand, don't skip it. It's key. And a lot of companies don't put it on there. And all I can say to that is tisk tisk because you absolutely need it to put on a collar and collar stand because you traditionally don't start from the center and go out with a collar because you're sewing this piece to here. You need to know where to start. And when they don't put it there, you have to start from the center and go out. That's fine. It actually makes your fabric um, be symmetrical in the way it's been pulled while it's been sewn. This uh, collar stand is like, it feels like the top layer is thicker. I mean, um, bigger, not thicker, bigger. That's not a question. Hey, Vidi. Uh, my weights, which ones? Do you mean the these? These are just traditional pattern weights from the garment industry. These are antique irons. I just find them to be the best. I, I, and, you know, it is pretty meta. <laughs> That's just a coincidence. <laughs> um, I feel like someone gave it to me as a joke a really long time ago. I'm going to guess you're the notch. And uh, I discovered they're really great pattern weights. So I use, or um, pat weights for cutting stuff out. I have a lot of them. So if you ever get them, they're kind of expensive, but you don't have to pay for shipping, right? Because you're at an antique store. So they're, they're going to be anywhere from eight to $22. But don't settle for one that doesn't have a handle because when they don't have a handle, I have, I have a few here, but I can't, they're underneath things. What happens is it's like a taller iron. It's like this tall, so it is nice and heavy. Without the handle, it has this slope. So when you go to pick it up, your hand, your hand just kind of glances right off of it and it's hard to grab. The trick is to turn them upside down and use them that way, but some styles have a hole in the middle for where they would put the coal inside to heat up the iron to do the ironing. So this is the style I prefer. I love it when they have the wood on the handle too. I like them when they have a nice narrow point too. Here's another one. 
Oh, here's one. This is what I'm talking about. So like this is my oldest one. And you can see how the sides are kind of sloped. So sometimes when I'm picking it up, it does that and it's really annoying. So here's the trick. Turn them upside down and use them like that. And then you can grab them really easy. These I've used tape on. And you know, you can put a few things in it, but like I said, using it upside down is great. They're just awesome. They're really heavy. They're super smooth and flat. And as long as they're not coming in contact with water, you won't have any problems because they are iron. <laughs> they're literally irons. Yes, they do, Carrie. Did you not? Usually, and they usually ship the next day, Carrie. They're super fast on the shipping. Oh, Libby asked if I like the rib I got from Nick of Time. I did. It's super stout. Like it's super stout and commercial feeling. It's cotton, so it's it's got some stiffness. But the weird funny thing is, Libby, I ordered a yard and I got two yards of it. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm gonna use for that. Are you sure did you get an order confirmation, Carrie? When'd you order? That's really weird. You got an order confirmation, right? Come on, stop moving, please. It's so lofty, things are kind of shifting. I have a little tiny iron too, I can't reach it. But that one, you did, oh, okay. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm surprised. Maybe it's in your junk folder. Because they've already shipped my order and they don't play favorites. <laughs> like I, I know they don't. Like they're they're pretty awesome. They just they ship in the order they get and they're really fast. Unless there's just something up, like they're waiting on something. But that would be weird. Where's the center? That is not the center. This is the center right here. All right, so we're gonna hold one of these back and we're gonna trim it down to make it an under collar. All right, so we only have cuffs and uh, pockets and the placket. Huh. Yeah, I feel like it should have shipped. Two pockets. I think Aisha was like, yeah, two. <laughs> I was thinking the same because, um, something different you know I saw someone's men's shirt and it had flaps on the pocket and I was like hmm I haven't done that in a while that'd be kind of cool oh cool Carrie nice well that's a nice bonus got there some of the green rib oh yeah here's a stout too yeah interesting Libby that's what I've seen. People are like mixed reviews. Like people are like, eh, the quality's okay. So that's all I got from them. We're having a big sale right now. I was kind of like, how did I not know about this place? Like how come, and then now it's popping up everywhere. I see it all the time. But yeah, I don't know. I didn't really like the shipping experience. I got the, I got the quilted stuff I use because I use that on that Ozark vest for a wardrobe by me, which I haven't posted pictures of that. Helen's Closet Sam Apron or the Strathcona Henley on my husband because he's still gimpy. <laughs> so um, I haven't like finished the photos of that. I will post some pictures of it so you can, guys can see, especially that Ozark vest because it turned out so good. But I used um, that, there's this like waterproof twill 
at Hearts I got in this moss color, which is a kind of a crazy color. I got the gray rib from Nick of Time, and I got the quilted lining from Mood Fabrics, and I, I really liked all of them. I will say with the quilted lining, though, that stuff started coming unquilted when I cut it. I did take that into consideration, so. Oh, yeah. A buttonhole and a channel. So they do, they put a buttonhole for the pencil. Yeah. Yeah, check your mail. Are you in the West, Carrie? I can't remember. All right, so I'm going to make this an under collar. And the way I'm going to do that, so traditionally what you're doing is you're trying to carve out, like in an exaggerated way, carve out between here. This isn't as as important or it's a little tricky. And you're also trying to carve out. So what I usually do is I go down about an eighth of an inch in the center and to nothing at this point. So basically picture a big curve, but it won't be that drastic. <coughs> and Utah, oh yeah, it'll probably be there. Oh, interesting, Libby. That's suspicious. So uh, here's the center. So we're just going to mark this one eighth of an inch right there. And then I'm going to go to zero. I'll just kind of eyeball it. So that's what I'm taking off, right? To zero here. And we'll do the same here even though it's a little trickier. This way, then um, the under collar won't show on the outside, especially if you're doing like a contrast fabric or something. Uh, I'll interface this one. So I'm just gonna put a pin in this one to remind myself that this is the top collar and that this is the under collar here. So we still need interfacing cut from this piece, interfacing for the collar stand. So I'm setting these, I'll set them aside over here so you can see them. We still need to cut the um, cuffs. I'm gonna put all these pattern pieces in the envelope so they're out of the way. We have the placket and we have the sleeve placket in fabric left and this is our fabric <laughs> we're getting close <laughs> oh man where's our green line okay there's our green line i won't be cutting the interfacing for the cuff any smaller i don't find that helps me too much so but you can if you like and if I did, I would probably, uh, it depends. If you're doing a pretty heavy fabric for your overshirt, then maybe you would want to cut off the interfacing on the seam line and just be as precise as you can about that. I don't like that in some fabrics. I don't like that because you might get like a ridge. If it was a lighter weight fabric, you might get kind of a ridge that might show I'm probably exaggerating to be honest, but it's something to think about. Um, I like the interfacing to go up to the edge because I like it to be a nice consistent surface. But then again, if you were using a pretty thick fabric, maybe you would want to cut down on the seam allowances to kind of make it less bulky in there. Yeah, I know, right? I know, it might be fast. Yeah, I don't feel that great. I don't feel terrible. I just don't feel like, I feel like, um, I just feel kind of funky. And I can't tell if it's just my, my um, kind of my mojo for the season is kind of like, nah, <laughs> you know? Because I'm really into all the things I'm making, so I don't want to give them up. Oh, I replied to your email, Libby, about like your ideas about the Mighty Networks. I've gotten a few people um, have contacted me, which is awesome. 
And I totally agree with you. Hi, Amy. How's it going? Oh, wow, Carrie. Rain and snow, and then it's like warm. That sounds so tropical. <laughs> it probably feels kind of tropical. I will do some interfacing. So you know how I was mentioning my issue with the plackets, the front plackets becoming different sizes left and right because I interface one and I don't interface the other. This is kind of an issue with cuffs too. If you're doing a really lightweight fabric, you might consider interfacing all four of your cuffs because I think, especially if you haven't put a lot of cuffs on the um, shirt, like this, this little guy right here onto the shirt, I feel like that, that it can be a really tricky sewing step, especially for beginners. And I jumped right into doing shirt making when I didn't have the skills to do it. So I really fought with it a lot. And I feel like, especially when you have one interface and one not, the, between the interfacing maybe slightly shrinking the fabric and it being ultra stable and the other cuff being a little bit kind of loosey-goosey, relaxed and kind of easy to stretch, it's really hard to get your cuff on perfectly from the inside and the outside, they act completely differently. So, oh, okay, cool, Libby. Hey, Penny. Oh, uh, well, thanks for rubbing it in. Toffee and marshmallows. I thought you were making marshmallows the other day. That sounds amazing. Homemade toffee. Oh, you know what? This is how punky I'm feeling. Candy doesn't sound good to read me right now, but there is a candy shop in Paradise. And I haven't been there yet. It's kind of shocking. They make chocolates there. Oh, Amy, are you in Utah too? <laughs> it sounds like where Carrie's at. All right, so we're going to put interfacing um, on our cups there. So that just leaves the sleeve binding and the sleeve house. Such a cute name. And this is all my fabric. Who was scared? Not me. All right, this is the grain line. Yeah, oh God, I love toffee. Do you put peanuts on it? Let's just complete the torture for me. <laughs> like, tell me everything. Let me live vicariously. <laughs> My address is in the description. <laughs> Oh, you know, I've had that happen when I've made um, like merengues. You know, sometimes the cocoa changes the consistency of the egg white batter. Oof, yeah, Carrie. It's definitely, candy making is um, very delicate with heat. Hey, Kathy Sue, how's it going? We've had crazy storms here, um, and now we have a bunch of creeks on our property, more than the two we usually have. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, okay. I sometimes like interfacing this sleeve placket, the house. I love that she calls it this, because this is what I always called it in college, and I totally forgot that. Um, but now people call them tower plackets, column plackets, and shirt sleeve plackets. They call them all kinds of things. You're making fudge with Velveeta? Okay, Kathy Sue. I'm super suspicious of that whole sentence. You're gonna have to win me over. Oh, you're in oh you're in Omaha. Oh, okay, Amy. Iowa. Hi Ray, how's it going? Um, I used to fish with Velveeta, Kathy Sue, so I can't eat it. <laughs> we used to fish for bluegill. <laughs> okay, Benny. <laughs> hmm. But if I did know... I'd have to not know that. <laughs> <Let it breathe. laughs> nope. 
No creeps at my house, thankfully. Just creeks with water in them. <laughs> I did, when I drove into my driveway the other day after work, it was dark. Um, there were two foxes crossing my driveway. And I was like, oh, hi. And I stopped and they were like, they were big. They were really long. Their tails were massive. All right, do I save this? What do you think? I know Thurl was concerned. Ugh, you never know, right? I'll save it for um, just in case I want different sleeve plackets. But this is really not much <laughs> to save. So, all right, so let's do, um, I'm gonna think about interfacing this. I kind of want to. I really like when your sleeve placket, when you're doing this style, is really stable and it's not gonna kind of stretch on you, you know? Because you really can't interface the slit of the sleeve placket. It'll show. Like, if you could interface it only in the seam allowance, that that would be fine, but that's not the case, right? You, you kind of want it to be the whole slit and then you would see a little bit of your interfacing. So at least it would stabilize the placket. There's really not much here, but I'll just keep these pieces together. Yeah, right, Ray, I know, huh? <laughs> no fudge for me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Isn't Velveeta cheese? Very confused. Kathy Sue swears by it. Maybe you have to share the recipe. Because, <laughs> yeah, that sounds... I mean, you know, there's a... Um, it's like a, a soft cheese, Fiona. Uh, it's processed cheese. Right? Like a cheese slice on a burger. That's what you would get. Like my daughter loves those. Oh, really, Jan? That's nice. We had one have kits at our house this year. And while it sounds cool, I was still a little bit like, yeah, I don't know about this, you guys, you know? All right, so I want two of these plackets. I'm gonna interface both sides. That might be a little overkill, but it'll at least stabilize it. And that's really what my aim is. I don't want them to shrink. Because that doing the Fairfield with the plaid matching and having uh, both plackets be different, that was, that was a struggle. Like getting those buttons and buttonholes on, that was one of the most I've struggled because how else can you match it when you've literally cut it on the plaid and it's perfectly lined up on the neckline and on the hem but then they were a, like a well over an inch different. So I put the buttons in buttonholes and I used the lines of the plaid. And what really saved it is the fact that buttons can kind of float inside of the buttonhole going up and down. And it doesn't look like it's doing that on my husband, thankfully, because I was a little worried. Um, oh, it didn't work with that code Jensen 10. I'm sorry, Viddy. I mean, we're talking about fudge, you guys. It's not nutritional. It's extra yumminess. <laughs> Poor Kathy Sue. <laughs> in foil? I've never seen it in foil. Yeah, Cricut's been through a phase of really loving that stuff. She just loves it on her burger. I love Swiss. Swiss is my favorite on a burger. Rubber and cheese. Yeah, it is kind of funny that way. I'm, de I'm definitely, like, curious now about the, t the fudge, but I don't know. I'm thinking that it reminds me of something else that has kind of a, a mystery ingredient because I'll, I bet the Velveeta brings a richness to it, you know? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Kathy Sue's like, let's stop talking about this. <laughs> yeah, I know, Kathy. <laughs> Okay, let me get rid of some of these little pieces here. 
I'm using the black interface thing I have because it's kind of nice when you get to use it, you know? I think I can get two of these here. And I still have my collar. This right here is the, um, you know what? I was about to say this is from Needle Sharp, but it's not. It's the stuff from my Auburn blazer. What's this stuff called? Hymo? No, it's not that, right? Because that's like, boy, I'm kind of like realizing I'm a little lost with my interfacing here. All right, here's my, let's pull out our pieces so we can interface them. And uh, what did I say about, this is my top collar, right? Sheesh. <clears throat> Once this is interfaced, I won't get them confused. I thought I pinned the top collar. Yeah, I did. Wow. This is the under collar. Keeping all the pins off my table here. So we just need a collar stand and the collar. And we're good. Oh, I love clotted cream. Another food that has a terrible name but is absolutely delightful. Oh, interesting. I wonder if I can make clotted cream, cream in the um, instant pot. <laughs> Translate to, I wonder if Michael would make me clotted cream in the instant pot. You know? <laughs> Pin and top. Okay, thank you, Fiona. Um, where'd that bot go? Didn't I see one? Did she already get it? Oh, there, Beverly. Beverly, you're getting coal as well. <clears throat> All right. Oh, interesting, Jan. Yes, it's the weft, Libby. I can use that for my collar and collar stand, right? It feels like Trico, brushed Trico, the interfacing does. I ordered the uh, interfacing, the um, fusible woven, and I got my um, shipping confirmation. But I was kind of cracking up that it said, I got this email that said, yay, a part of your order has shipped. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then I got another one two days later that said, yay, the rest of your order has shipped. Phew. <laughs> and that was from Joanne Fabrics. And I thought, wow, I don't th didn't think they'd be so whimsical. <laughs> it's kind of cracking me up. Another one. She did two. Yep. If you're a troll, you're getting coal. That's how it is around here. We're harsh. Okay. And you're not getting any of the treats we're talking about. Oh, I, oh, that's the one I got. Okay, great. All right, so we need to um, iron these. <clears throat> iron those. I think for this one, I'm going to sew the collar and collar stand using that other method where I finish it under the collar um, at the top of the collar stand. I'm going to do that because I'm kind of getting into that method lately and it's something different. My interfacing piece is used up. I have a little brush. This is perfect for today. To get all this stuff off my table. There we go.
Oh. Oh, I see, Penny. That makes sense. Can you easily name a project where you sewed French seams with a side vent? Uh, easily. <laughs> Um, the Re Reynolds dress, I think, um, the Reynolds top and dress by Helen's Closet. And I think that um, I did that vent. I'm pretty sure I did that with French seams. I'm not quite sure. And it would be the ASMR version. The other one is the Rita shirt dress. But I feel like that's the one I was kind of like, huh, I never thought about doing a vent here. <clears throat> um, another one could be, there was a top I did, um, not the Cheyenne tunic. What about the Piper Boho tunic? What does that hem look like? That doesn't have a vent, never mind. It does on some of the views, but it doesn't on the one I sewed. Not the Mellow Low, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I guess I can't easily name it, but I'm, I know on the Reynolds dress, that one has this really awesome uh, vent with the little uh, triangle at the top of the vent. I'm just trying to remember if I did French seams on that one because I could have used the serger because it, it also has side seam pockets. But I do French seams on side seam pockets often, so I don't remember. I'm trying to think. I could actually look through my my book of patterns here. You know? Let's see. Let me just look through some of the more recent things I've gotten. Hmm. Not the Paddington. Wait, did I do it on the Paddington? Did I do it on the Paddington? I think so. The Paddington top. I'm going to say the Paddington top. It's not easy. I, I think it's a, I, I might do it kind of in a clunky way where you clip. I'm going to say Paddington. Yeah. These, this is just the top section. Uh, let me just look through the dresses. Yeah, see the, the Reynolds has this uh, slit right here. I just can't remember if I did French seams. Memory lane, right? I know, it is kind of. Every time I go through this, I'm like, oh yeah. This is kind of why I stopped using Trello. It's just too much. Um, and, I, and I like being able to carry it around. I also don't like looking at a screen all the time. My eyes are just killing me from it. This is my section of like, the one garment is the whole outfit. That's why there's jumpsuits and dresses in here. Okay, the, um, nope, nope, nope. That has a vent, but it's overlap. Never mind. Never made, made. I do pretty good though. Like I've pretty much made, I would say 98, 95, 98% of the patterns I own. I don't have very many that haven't been sewn. Yeah, I know on the Rita I did. I just don't remember how well I did it. That's, I know that one pops into my head first and foremost. Cause I know for sure I talked about it in there. Okay, only a few people, a few, few of them left, not a few people. Oh, you changed your, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, the rest of these sections, like these are, these are um, like cozy things to wear. This is loungewear or undergarments. 
menswear, bags, aprons, because we've had so many, I have a section for them, children's, hats and accessories, stuffed animals, and then I have a quilting section, and oh, and then costumes that I have not, or folk, or um, costumes and um, cultural, that's not the word I'm looking for. What, what's the word I'm looking for? These aren't costumes, the folklore patterns. Anyway. Yeah, you know what I like about this, Jan, is that it's just really easy to maintain. The, the only thing you have to worry about is making sure you always take a copy and put it in the book. Because, you know, right now what I do is I have my pattern and the instructions go in here if I've printed and made it. And then usually what I do is I just print out two. And here's my, here's my tip. <laughs> If when you're printing out the one for the binder, I want that to be as few pages in there as possible. There's a few where I just didn't manage. And so it's like two pages, um, two separate pages. And um, some pattern companies like Helen's Closet, we need to have a little chat, Helen. She has her information spread out on quite a few pages. So it takes three in order to get the sketch and the size chart the uh, and the materials like those are the things I want I want sketches the finish not the finished measurements I don't really care about that um, I want this flat sketches the size chart and I want the materials list I want those things and a lot of times sometimes some of these companies like that um, Annie Cardigan by um, is that so so deaf Hers, like, it's literally on page 17 of the instruction book. It's crazy deep in there. So this is my tip. When you're printing those out and you want them front and back, you can select that in your print dialog box. So if, say you only want, you want page 1 and page 8. So 1, 8. And then print on two, on, on two sides. And it'll automatically print those two pages on two sides. You can do the same thing with your printer, um, like if you have a top loading printer, you can put the pages and say one to two sided and it'll do the same thing, which is nice. See ya, Carrie. <laughs> oh, I didn't see. Oh, hi, Deveda. How's it going? Oh, welcome, welcome. We're kind of at the end. This is the fastest stream ever. I just cut out um, this uh, shirt, which I've already misplaced the directions for. Right here. We just cut out this Jensen Relax shirt by Wardrobe by Me. Then sewing will be the same for the women's version called Anna as well. So, so I wanted to show you guys. So I got all this, I got the Sand Hill Sling pattern from one of you guys and um, I'm making them. So I went and got fabric. And you know, I hear about that waxer canvas from Robert Kaufman. This is it, look at how bad it marks up, first of all. Second of all, it leaves so much residue on my machine. It's nuts. There's so much wax on my needle embedded in the feed dogs. In the hole that the needle goes through is like a wax hole right now. It's bad. So I don't know. Have you guys sewn with this? I feel like there's so much wax coming off of it. It's not going to have any coating. Like it's going to be fabric. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I'm dubious. I'll show you what I have so far. Oops, siren. I'm making two right now. And I was thinking about making the third one with you guys. So um, this is the one I made for my sister. But look at how marked up it is. I did some top stitching on the front of it. It looks so much better on camera than it does in real life. I'm sewing it a little different too. I'm going to bind the inside, of course. <laughs> and this one's for my daughter. There's a, a little fox on the onion skin tracing paper. So I just stitched the fox on the paper. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll see, Kate. 
I did the zip pocket on these two. I'm waiting for my hardware. It arrived today, but so I can't get it, go any further without it. And it has a drop-in style lining, so there's a much easier way to sew it together where you assemble the lining completely, you assemble the outer completely, you drop the lining in, and then you um, hand stitch it in. I'm oversimplifying that. I don't like it when the lining kind of bags out inside. I don't want it to be kind of billowy, so I'm going to try this method. We'll just see how it goes. There's some, uh, bonjour. Nathmi, how's it going? <clears throat> and then um, this is the other one I have. So I got this one for my dad. So this is what this fabric looks like. This is brown. Um, it's what it looks like before I fiddle with it. And then look at how marked up it is. It's really bad. You think so, Jan? Okay. It's just, I hope it's okay. So you know how you can usually reset wax canvas with a little, like a hair dryer. I thought about doing that, but as soon as they pull it out, they're going to wrinkle it. And then they'd probably be like, oh no, I'm hurting it. You know? So, oh my goodness. You spelled my name right and everything. That's so nice. <laughs> I never see my name in chat. <laughs> well, I do. <clears throat> the way you spell Sava. <laughs> So yeah, I, I'm gonna hang tough. I'm I'm doing I got all kinds of cool hardware coming from Noodlehead, um, and then I'm gonna these little t leather ties are from Maker's Fabric. When you get your fabric from Maker's Fabric, it comes with this leather tie, and it seems strong enough for a zipper pull. So I was thinking about you know doing a zipper pull. You know, I think I ordered some from Noodlehead though, so I'm not sure. I will actually need these or not. But they could work, you know, right? And there we go. Pretty easy. And I can use it. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad. <laughs> Right, Ray? Yeah, you have to stop by Kathy Sue's because I want to try that fudge now, but I don't want to know I'm trying that fudge. <laughs> it does look kind of vintage. And this is the black, but it's more of like a charcoal. I went with the contrast stitching because I just thought it might look a little boring. So yeah, so this one has the little cats. My sister just got a little black cat. My sister and her family got a little black cat and they named him Hubble. And then I got the mushroom, so we'll see. I'm liking the pattern a lot, obviously. It's just, I'm, I'm not keen on this canvas quite yet. <laughs> the autocorrect got you. <laughs> yeah, autocorrect's like, what? All right, so I will be here tomorrow. I'll be sewing part one of the Jensen. Maybe Friday I'll be sewing one of these. We'll see how I'm doing by then, like how I'm feeling like getting stuff done. Uh, but I, I, my sister's doesn't need to be done until February, and I, of course hers is almost done. But my dad's and my daughter need to be done soon, so. Yeah, right, Ray? Isn't that fabric cute? It's by um, Coco, uh, Coco Land. And look, Ray, occasionally there's the back of his head. <laughs> Isn't that funny? His whiskers are all like, like this little whisker, you can barely see it, but it's like, it's like, like got a little bend in it. <laughs> it was pretty cute. I've seen that fabric at the shop for a long time. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, now is the time to get it. So, yeah, so you would leave this lining unattached here. I just really like how nice and smooth it is when it's like this. That's why I'm doing the binding. And no one's going to see the binding, so why not, right? I mean, I don't mind if people see my binding, but I'm just trying to sell you on the idea of trying it too. So, yeah. And then I have the back. The back has the strap, but I don't have the hardware, so I can't finish attaching it, and then it'll be done. I'm debating on a handle on the back, but I don't think so. 
Yeah, thanks, Libby. I'm sure I'll feel fine by tomorrow. Right. I have an, I, oh, that's what I need, I need to do another, I'm doing a video by Friday. I should probably start working on that. <laughs> I promised the video for Friday, but I didn't plan on getting my booster yesterday. I just heard of a walk-in place, so I just walked in and did it. So, it's done. All right, well, um, see you guys tomorrow, maybe? I'm going to iron all my interfacing, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Jensen. And, um, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I'm excited to sew it. I love sewing those kinds of things, so. Oh, thanks, Fiona. Yeah, I hope they'll, I hope they like them. Yeah, we'll see. I got some zippers from Noodlehead, too, so. That'll hopefully match this kind of brownish redwood color, so. All right, you guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, uh, hang in there with all your gift sewing. Maybe I should be saying that to me. <laughs> Bye.